Okay. So while continue fishing, okay, I'm, basically while the user wants to continue fishing, <clears throat> over here it says the program simulates the rolling of a six-sided die. That, that's where we are. So let's basically let, let's create a, a, a die object, right? So die, I'm using a name, and then I'm going to call it die one, right? You can call it fish if you want, but then <laughs> let's just make, let's just do die one. Um, or yeah, die one is going to be called to. Well, basically, this is like creating this die one. Die die one is like it's like basically creating a variable of type int and calling it number. Int is the type. We all know that a number is the name of the variable. You can think of this as a typing. You can think this uh, think of this as the name of the variable, right? But when you try to create a variable, okay, of this type, Java Java is going to realize that okay, this is not one of the primitive data types. It's not an integer. It's not a double. It's not a float. It's not a character. Java is going to know that and say, okay, uh, let me look through your folder and see if there's any die class there. So it's going to look through your folder, or if the class is not in your folder, it's going to look for any path that, you, that uh, any path that you specified. Look at that. Look at that location and see if there's any class called die. And, it, and if if it finds the die class, like in this case, it's in the same folder, so it's going to find it. If it finds a die class, then it's going to uh, um, realize that okay, you are trying to create a die. You, or be, basically, you're trying to create a class type variable that's going to be used to hold a die object. So it's going to reserve this die one, die one variable to hold a die object. So now I'm going to go ahead and create a new die object in the memory, All right? And we know the die object actually accept in the number of sides given, okay, for the die. So I'm going to type in six because the question said over here that the program simulates the rolling of a six-sided die. All right, so six for the number of sides of the die. And this equal sign is basically going to return or, or basically assign the, the memory address of this die object to die one. So now die one is going to reference the die object. All right. Over here in the loop, in the while loop, it said over here that the program simulates the rolling of um, simulates the rolling of six-sided die. Right. So we've created the die. We need to now roll it. Although the die one has been rolled, right? Since this is a loop, and you know. This statement is only going to run one time. Since we want it to be, you know, like rolled each each time, each time the loop iterate. Let's let's call this again. Again, it doesn't make it doesn't matter. Let's call die one dot roll. It doesn't it doesn't matter. It's just going to roll it and give it a, a different value. All right. So we we know the roll method is going to basically generate generates a number from. So if the user typed in five as a number of sites, it's going to generate a number from one to five, right? And so that's what it's going to do. And let's see. Um, each so. All right, so the program simulates the rolling of a six-sided die. Use a die class that was shown. In, okay. Each item that can be cut is represented by a number generated generated from the die. Um, for example, one for a huge fish, two for an old fish, and three for a little fish, and so on. All right. So. Um, we can do this. We can. We can. Um, so basically, instead of just do, instead of just calling that one to row, right? Let's put this around an if statement. Okay, let's put this around an if statement and say that if die one dot row. Okay, if the value that 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 is returned from the die one dot row call method call. Okay, so we basically by doing this, we are still we are still rolling it, right? Well, we're going to get the value. We're going to get the the. Well, let's see. Wait, let's see. Did I want to roll? Does it return? Oh, it doesn't return. It doesn't return it. Okay. So th this is bad actually. So what we were doing initially was the correct thing. All right. So let's roll because over here it said each item that I'm um, sorry. The program simulates the rolling of a six-sided die. So we roll it. We roll it right. And then now we can get the die value. So now let's create an if statement here in the loop. After we've rolled it, let's let's get the value of that die. Let's say it, we know that the, there's an access over here. There's a method get die value, which basically returns the die value. So if die one dot get die value, okay, we know get die value uh, get die value right returns the die value of that object. So if die one dot get die value, it, it basically there's going to be a value here, okay. If that value is equal to is double equal to one as a matter of fact, let's let's use a switch statement instead of an if statement. We can use an if statement, but then 
let's use a switch, a switch statement. We don't use switch statements too often, so let's just, you know, why not? And for the last program in chapter six, let, let's use a switch statement. It's, it's, it works as, as very similar to an if statement. All right, but, let, but let, let's just, you know, change it a bit and use a switch statement. So a switch, I'm going to basically call the switch. I'll type in the switch statement. Let me just create the structure for it. All right, so, so we are switching between the options I'm going to type here based on the value of what, what, what I'm going to type here. So first of all, I'm switching from this from a value here, which is so I'm I'm switching based, um, I'm switching um, between options. I'm going to type here based on the, va val the value I'm going to type in here. The value I'm going to type in here is basically the value of the die. So die one dot get die value is what I'm testing on. So based on, I'm going to switch between the different cases I'm going to type here based on the value of that one. So let me just start so so that you know you don't get confused. So state so in the case, okay, I'm so I'm I'm switching based on this. So in the in the case where get that one dot get that value is one, right? I'm going to use a colon. What I want to do is we want to we want to um well, so over here it said that so for the fish for example we can use one to represent a huge a huge fish, right? We can use two to represent an old fish. I'm sorry, an old shoe. I keep on saying an old fish. Three to represent a little fish, and so on. And each item that the user ca catches is worth a different amount of points. So if the user, so if the, well, first of all, if that one or get value, if it represents one, if this is confusing you too much, I'll probably I'll break it here like this. Okay. All right. I mean, shouldn't it should, um, if if it's confusing you just just um, just go ahead and uh, put a line break in yours. I just want to make make this as compact as possible. All right, so um, so we know that get die one dot get die value is going to return the value here. So in the case where the value that's returned here, right, is one, we know one represents a huge fish, right? So we can go ahead and display a message saying that okay, you you caught a you know you caught a huge fish or something. But at the same time, we need to accumulate points based on the fish that the user caught. All right, so let's create a variable that's going to keep track of that, the number of points the user got, right? So let's declare a, a, an integer variable because we, we are keeping track of an integer value, let's say 50 points, 52 points, 83 points, integers, right? So an int value, I'm going to call it, or int variable, I'm going to call it user number of points. Let's set it to zero initially because before the game starts, the user has zero number of points. So in the case where the die returned after 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 being after being rolled, the die returned a value of one. Let's set the user number of points. Though the, the program didn't give us uh, you know a, a table for points or anything, so we're going to just make up make make it up ourselves. So the user number of points now is going to be equal to let's say. Um, um, 300, I guess. Let, let's let's say 300. Oh no, no. Let's 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 do 60. If you if you catch, um, the, basically if you catch a huge fish, you get 60 points. And then let's display a message. Let's display a message saying that okay, you caught. A huge fish, the one for huge fish. So these are just these are not the points. These are just numbers representing the different kinds of fish. These are numbers that from the die. After you roll it, the, the die will because the question said six sided die. So the die will, will either return one, two, three, four, five, or six. And if the user if the caught if the, the die returned one, that means the user caught, you know, we can associate the numbers with, with each with each fish. So if the user, um, if basically if they return one, that means the user caught a huge fish. Two, the user caught an old shoe, basically. So this is how the how the. Let me, first of all, let me just add another case here, and just to, so just so you have an idea how the case. The switch statement works. So in the case where it's two, all right. So basically, let's change this to, fifty. You caught a an old shoe. <laughs> oh, 
small shoe. Um, well, if you if you cut an old shoe, I mean that's a shoe, so that's not that's not really. You, you, you should you should get a few, you should get few points for that. You should get actually zero points for that. Yeah, that's that's it. It's zero. All right, so <laughs> this is how the, the switch statement works. It, it works just like the if statement. So based on these cases, whether case is one, case is two, case was referring to the value of die die dot get get die value. So based on the value I'm switching between these cases. I'm I'm doing one of these things, only one of these things, based on the value of get die die one or get value. So based on the value of of this of this method call here. All right. So I'm switching between these options based on the value of this. Right. Okay. So if that if this whole condition or here, uh, yeah, this whole this condition here re uh, returns a value of one then do this. If it returns a value of 2, in the case where it's 2, then do this. So on and so forth, right? The only thing is we are missing a break statement here. The way the case statements, the way the case, the switch statement works, if you don't have a break statement, after it's done with this, in the, if, the, if the case is 1, for example, after it's done, if you don't have the break statement, after it's done doing this, it's going to go ahead and continue, right? You have to have a break statement so that after it's done, in the, if the case is one, so that if the case is one, it's going to go ahead and do what what it's supposed to do. Right when it's done, it breaks out of the switch statement. Because if you don't have a break a break statement here, it's going to fall through, and continue doing what's there. It doesn't it doesn't even it doesn't even matter if this it's not it does it's not even checking it. It's uh, it's not it doesn't matter if this is case. It's just going to go going to go ahead and do it, right? All right. It's, if you don't have the break statement, it's just, it's just basically going to go ahead and run the statements below it. So have a break statement so it can exit out of the switch switch block, All right? All right. So now let's just make duplicates of these. Then we could have used an if statement for that too. Okay. We could have said if die one dot get die value is equal to one. Okay. Um. Hold on one second. Yeah, so that's fine. If it's equal, if it's equal to now, you use double equals. To, if you're using a if statement, you use double equals to 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 check, right? But over here we say case one, case two, case three, case four, case five. Um, we can have six too. So let's have one more. Case six. All right. So if you so if one. It said for a huge fish, right? This 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 was, this was just an example, and I'm using his example, right? The author's example. So, for example, one for a huge fish, we've done that. Two for an old shoe, we've done that. And you get zero point because the shoe. Why, why do you get points for catching a shoe? You know. <laughs> so three for a little fish. Okay. So you caught a little fish for three. Yeah. Caught a little fish. And for little fish, let's give you ten points. Okay, let's give you ten points. And then let's add our own f our own fish, uh, you know, fish, right? So for four, let's say you caught uh, you caught you caught a whale, right? You caught a whale. You caught a whale. And a whale, let's give you a hundred points, because come on, if you can catch a whale, then you are the king. You are the you're the boss. So, so let's give you a hundred points if you if you catch a whale. I mean, we can actually organize this, right? Doesn't matter. These these are just values, and we are actually associating whatever. It's a die. So basically, when they roll, they're going to get a random number out of this six, six out of the out of these six numbers, right? So it doesn't matter which one. It doesn't matter. They don't have to be in order. So if you catch, um. If you, if you get if you basically roll and you get a value of four, then you caught a whale. You get hundred points. And then in the case where it's five, you caught a goldfish. I don't know. A goldfish, and you get. Um, so if a huge fish gets you sixty, whale gets you hundred. Goldfish, let's give. It, it's gold, so let's just make it thir you know thirty-five. Right, that make it thirty-five, yeah. And in the case of when you when you get six, let's set it to you caught. You 
caught um I don't know a snail I don't know <laughs> I don't know I don't know a snail maybe I don't know let's just say in that case then five you get five points for that for catching a snail now the switch statement has um, a default cl clause you, you can think of, yeah or you can think of it as a clause default it, and the default works just like the else state the else statement in an, in an if else in, in an if else in an if else um, structure uh, so if, if something is true then do that else then do this so basically if if in the case where it's one it's going to do this in the case where it's two it's going to do this but what if the case is, is none of these now now the, the we know that if we are typing in six as the number of the number, number of sites then we're going to get one to one to six one to six as the number of sites when when the die is rolled right but but you know someone can just go ahead and change this to 100 and then in that case we can get 100 when the, when the die is rolled and then 100 wouldn't be in any of these cases so default is basically what is going to run when the, the number the, the number the thing you are switching on is not any of these cases so default let's just display a message you will first of all remove the number of points it's display a message saying out of range out of range and we don't have to put this break there but it you know i'm just going to put it there put it there anyways because it's good practice because default is the last this is not like a loop or anything default is the last statement in a switch statement so when it's done it's just going to exit out of the loop i'm just going to put break there just to you know enforce it i guess um just you just just to know that i have to have a break statement all the time okay it's not going to affect your, your code anyway all right so now what, what now when so basically now we can just we can just t test it right we are not displaying the user number of points we are not we are not but we are going to see what fish we caught just to see if it's, in, it's it, just to see if we are at least the program is working you know to some extent and just to fix some errors to at this point so let's go out go to where our folder is um that's python it's actually in, in dropbox but i have a, a shortcut on my desktop so Program challenges in chapter six. Let's save it here. Efficient game simula simulation. So I have my die class in there. Um, why do I? Oh yeah, that's fine. I have my die class in here. This is this is like a backup file or something. But this is a, this is the die die class. I haven't compiled it, so there's no there's no die dot class there. All right, so I'm going to save the efficient game simulation program here in the same folder. And like I said, as long as they're in the same folder, they should be able to see each other, right? So I'm going to save it here. I have a couple of errors, so let's see what it is. Um, operator plus cannot be applied to any int. Hmm. I'm you know sometimes some of these errors are you know they are it, it, they don't tell exactly. I'm guessing this error is probably because number of sites, right? It, do, it doesn't know it doesn't know what this number of sites is, and it's saying that it probably cannot apply one to something that it does it doesn't it doesn't know it, it probably cannot apply this plus that's just shift to something it doesn't know some of these errors I've, i guess you know well it, it says it here okay but at the same time it also says it it says something here i don't know anyway let, let's fix this let, let's try and fix the cannot find symbol cannot find the symbol number of side so i'm going to change this to number of sites because i meant to type in number of sites and not number of sites so let's do that and we can see that it fixed it. So some of these errors can be a bit confusing. Let's delete this comment. What is this saying? Um, cannot find symbol variable keyboard. All right, so um, I mentioned that we had to create, let's see, keyboard. I spelled it wrong, I guess, yeah. So I, I, I created this kind of object. I called it keyboard, but over here I spelled it, as, I spelled it wrong. So I'm going to spell it correctly here. Oops, keyboard. Oops. <laughs> okay, now compile this. Okay, then now we're fine. Okay, 